natural light, natural light. Little, little, little. Cut, new video, dab. Hello everyone, this is Ashley Jamerson coming to you from Ashley Lambert Realty and today is Tuesday, February the 18th. It has been a long time since I filmed a video and it's because I was suffering from a little bit of real estate burnout. I am super busy working with some amazing clients but the stress of owning a business, being a mompreneur, being an awesome wife, very heavy at times. And so I'm so glad we were able to take a break and I came back refreshed and facing a very busy day. So today I had to drop off my daughter, like that's typical stuff, but I locked myself out of the house this morning and my husband had to drive home and let my daughter and I in so I can get my car keys so I can do all the things. Um, I had to go to the mailbox, drop off about 200 mailers. I mail out a lot to my geographical form. So do that and then I'm going to head up to Stony Brook. I have two homes under contract there and a possible so I'm trying to keep track of the inventory. So when my client is ready, um, I'll know what's available and things like that. After that, I need to go further into Huntersville and go to a Realtor VIP event at Madame Holmes Magnolia Walk. So I'm going to film that neighborhood and share it with you guys. I am sort of in love with Huntersville for a lot of reasons, but um, yeah, got to go to Magnolia Walk. And then, super exciting, my husband and I are starting a new venture this year. And so we are actually going to look at land. Well, I'm going to go look at land and report back to him with land details and numbers um, for some homes that we're going to build and sell. So we're going to like be like a micro builder. So super excited about that. So looking at land, I'm looking at my planner, which is like really, really long. So um, after that, I have to head down to Sutton Farms. I have um, a client that's building in that DR Horton neighborhood. I, she was supposed to close, I feel like in January, but now it's March, no. It's still February, but I just feel like we're so late and like the closing keeps on getting pushed back because um, of the city permits and water and things like that. The weather here in Charlotte has been absolutely horrific. Um, I guess it could be worse. It could be snow. It could be flooding, but we have had so much rain that a lot of my new construction builds are literally like late behind, not on time. So it's not fun at all. Then I have to head down to South Charlotte and get the keys to a new listing that is hitting the market next week. We're going to have a huge mega open house. So all the details, of course, will be shared on that. But it is a really cute townhome in South Charlotte, really great prime school districts. So picking up the keys and starting all the marketing for that. So all of the things. And then I'm going to finish up my day by checking out another Meritage home or another Meritage neighborhood called Selena at the Vineyards. Um, again, it's down there in South Charlotte. While I'm down there, I might as well check it out. But that is all of the things. And then of course I have to get groceries because we've been gone on vacation, cook dinner, do homework, do baths, and then get back on the real estate grind. So yeah so a lot of people have asked me recently about how to become a realtor what to expect as a realtor is it hard what are the duties all this stuff like that the biggest thing that i can tell people is that the class is really really amazing at teaching you the law and the contracts but a lot of people leave those classes and don't know what to do next like they legit have no idea they don't know about prospecting and marketing and after you write the offer even before you write the offer um, what comes next the appraisal the inspection due diligence period and so I'm always like telling my agents I'm like know your contracts in and out because there are so many realtors out there who don't know the contracts in and out and how can they like protect you if they don't know how to explain what you're signing so I digress on that but Real estate is interesting. It really has no ceiling. So as hard as you work, 
the more successful you will be. So unlike other jobs and things like that in careers, you have a salary where you're capped and no matter how hard you work, you're still gonna make a certain amount of money. Real estate is totally not like that, but yes, it's work. Yes, there is a build up. Yes, you're gonna learn some really tough lessons about yourself and others. I mean, I'm learning lessons all the time <laughs> like I have a coach and some coaching sessions are really really I leave and I'm like I'm empowered and other ones I'm like man I've been in this since 2006 and there's still so much I don't know like I'm still just scratching the surface of real estate but you have to know how to plan how to execute your plan on many levels financially business wise personally because you will get burnt out I mean real estate burnout is real because it's not personal but it's personal so like when you're a realtor you really take on the task of making sure that your clients transition into the next phase of their life their new home is an easy one a smooth one a stress-free one and all of their stuff can sometimes ink its way into your family and into your personal life oh my goodness I don't know where I'm going um, first place Stony Brook station it always helps to know where you're going but my favorite app to use is Waze because all of the new construction sites show up on there like very easily Let's take I, I don't know where she's taking me because I haven't typed in anything yet but it's a really good app, especially with new construction, because oftentimes the addresses on the MLS are not even on like Google yet. Um, Stony Brook Station. You should not do this at home, like drive with no hands and stuff. But I have to figure out where I'm going. Let's take I-77 North Charlotte and I-77 North Express. Okay, perfect. In 1.6 miles, turn right to I-77 North US 21 North. So if you're thinking about being a realtor, I would love to chat with you, but I honestly feel that real estate is not for everybody. Um, you can possibly start out as a real estate assistant or an assistant to a realtor. That might give you like an idea of the daily task and things like that that a realtor has to do. And then of course you can decide if you want to get licensed, but it's not for everybody. It is a lot of work, a lot of hard work. Um, some people will say they wanna become a realtor because they want freedom or control of their schedule and things like that. And yes, overall, I plan my day, I design my life. So at the end of each year, one thing that I really enjoy doing is planning all of my time off. So my family vacations are pre-planned the year beforehand. All of my times off, my me time days are pre-planned. I do stick additional me time days in there in the event that it's like really rough or really busy. I do need to take like a mental break and recharge. But overall, at the end of each year, I plan all of the time off. And that's a good perk of being a realtor. However, like today is my first full day back and my planner is literally jammed pack. I'm checking up on a lot of houses today, a lot of houses tomorrow. And then on top of that, of course, I have all my prospecting and phone calls and follow ups with everybody. Like it's a lot. So you got to plan that. And like I said before, you have to be able to plan your days and execute those days and decide what things you absolutely have to do your big rocks and little rocks my coach recently gave me this awesome form um, it's about like 100 points and I am an ex gamer I love playing video games and games on my phones and stuff like that and this is like a little game I play with myself I try to get 100 points each day and sometimes things that don't matter take up a lot of time and I'm like well dang this is only five points let me look at these 20 point activities so I can hit my goal so that's really important you really have to be in 1,000 feet you really have to be a self starter and a finisher um, you have to know how to follow through with everything and you really have to study the craft of 
being a realtor and like I mentioned I'm still learning there's some personality types that like I'm like oil and vinegar with but then there's other ones which are the majority of the other people I'm really really good with but you you really have to study the craft so when your clients have a question you know how to answer it or when something looks kooky you know from your expertise that hey this isn't right let me look further into this so because your clients don't know what they don't know so you have to know, you have to study the craft, like I said. So it, again, if you wanna have like a one-on-one -on -one and chat about real estate, then definitely let me know. I do plan on growing my firm out, especially as my husband and I start building homes. And I'm looking for like specific types of people when it comes to like personalities, of course, like ASAP. So I've made it to Stony Brook Station and it's not quite 10 o'clock yet. I believe the on-site agent is already here so I do need to talk to her about current pricing. But here is my lot 33. She's a beauty. And um, so that one is under contract and then I have my clients that are relocating here from up north. I have to check on their home because their closing is scheduled for next month. So I've been keeping a really good eye on things there for them. But the neighborhood really is coming along. Like it's really, really cute. So this neighborhood is all single family homes, but there's these longer, I call them like row homes, but they're not row homes. They're not town homes, they're actual single family homes. So there's that style and then around the perimeter in some areas, there are the uh, more traditional style um, homes that have like a little bit larger yard and things like that. So this is the infamous North Carolina red clay that gets absolutely everywhere and it's a pain in the butt <laughs> when you are building. I think it holds up a lot of things, but I am gonna go ahead and check on some stuff. They've been doing a really good job at keeping the site clean keeping the inside of the home clean so no complaints at all with Meritage oh the sod is in on another house so I get called a lot about like why is the sod brown why is the sod ugly and I think that's Bermuda it's delivered and it's brown so it's totally normal it's seated and it's all good but you know it's brown it's dormant in the winter we are currently in winter even though it's warmer and yeah so let's check out my client's house real quick these little code enforcement notes are totally normal it is basically showing that it's basically showing that the house is being checked on by the city. And that's what you really, really want is you wanna know that it meets code. So those are code enforcements, meaning that something didn't pass and they can't move forward with the next step until that's fixed. So every now and then I'll get asked, well, do I need a third party inspection with new construction? And that's totally up to you. But when they give you the certificate of occupancy, it has all these things have been fixed. And right now there's no occupancy allowed. And that has to be taken care of. No matter who the lender is, who the builder is, you can't occupy that home until um, those are resolved. So definitely keep that in mind when you are building new construction. You do get a little bit of peace of mind, which is really good when you build new construction. But, you know, it's checked on a lot, especially by me. So right now I do see some cosmetic things. They call this the blue tape, or they don't call my walkthrough the blue tape, but these are things that would be taken care of during the blue tape. So things like this splatter of, again, that infamous Carolina red mud. I'm not sure how it got in to the home, but these are things that will be marked with blue tape. Also, there's some like random nicks and things in the drywall and they need to come in and cut in with the color so it's nice and crisp and things like that. But 
Meritage overall makes a really solid product. Like every now and then I'll have a builder and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to check on that like every other day. But Meritage lets me breathe a little bit and just do like my typical weekly checks on them. Again, a lot of cosmetic stuff in this house. The power's not on yet, so I can't test everything, but yeah, that probably needs some painting and things like that up there, some touch up. Yeah, lots of dirty workers a little bit. But again, by the time my clients move into this home, it's gonna be perfect, I guarantee it. <laughs> oh wow, the washer and dryer's already been delivered. That's interesting. Okay, <laughs> I had to make sure the flooring was in because it's a little bit ridiculous to deliver the washer and dryer and not have the flooring done. A couple weeks ago, this window here was actually cracked. There was also um, an exterior issue with the cement boarding, so that was fixed as well. I need to check in with Jesse again, get pricing and reorganize the closing date and the final walkthrough for this house we need to adjust a little bit to make my clients relocation to here a little bit more smoother so we need to push things back a few days i'm pretty sure they'll be fine with it there's no reason why they shouldn't be fine with it but yeah this neighborhood is really 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 coming along so i'm gonna go chat with jesse and i'll check in with you guys later productive day 
and I will check in with you guys after I leave my listing.